Sorry, I'm gonna say. Do you have any advice for an actor who hates their natural voice? It took one year for me to get used to it. I'm still nervous. Um, that, that's always an interesting thing, actually, because a, a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people don't like the sound of their own voice. Some people like the sound of their own voice a little too much. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but, but uh, I don't know, it, it's interesting because there. You know, I've seen this comment question from a lot of people. I, I know a lot of people who are who are working and successful who are still not particularly fond of their own voice. Um, you know, and the tricky thing is, with particularly with auditions and working from home, because we do have to record and edit ourselves so much, you're kind of <laughs> stuck in that you, you know, you kind of have to listen back. You know, when we were going into the agents all the time and we were going to casting facilities and stuff, then, you know, you, you're, you're, you listen differently when you're performing than you do when you're uh, producing or editing ears work different um you don't tend to hear yourself the same way when you're recording now you know i've been recording myself at home for a million years and i've recorded a million things so i'm able to use my producer ears and my actor ears at the same time that i'm given that i'm worried more about the performance because you know my stuff's all dialed in so i pretty much know how it's going to sound but i'm also able to hear Sometimes you'll do something and go, oh, no, no, okay, no, no, <laughs> let me do that again. You know, uh, you'll know you'll know when you give a clunker read, because one of the cool things, too, though, about this is as actors that um, I've always said this, and I always said this as a musician, too. If you ever get to the point where you can no longer surprise yourself, you should probably quit. Um, because... The, the beautiful thing is, yeah, we, you know, we have intention and we have experience and we study and we take classes and, and you know, we work and, and we build up all of that stuff so that we have a, a basis for, to draw on and, and kind of a basis of what we do and our, our toolbox and how we approach problem solving with characters and with, with story. But one of the great things is sometimes a read will come out of you that you had no idea you were going to do. <laughs> You know, they'll do something, and you kind of go. Sometimes it's like, whoa, whoa, what was I thinking? And other times you go, where'd that come from? That, that was pretty cool. So, um, I, that's I, I don't I don't know if I have really good advice for that, just because I've never experienced it. I mean, I think like a lot of us as a kid, you know, I'm from the cassette recorder days. So when I was a kid, you know, I used to record myself on cassette doing characters and stuff, and got a huge kick out of it. So. Um, I, I think that I guess the big thing is to try to just try to focus on the idea that it's that it's the character, not you. Um, because realistically, that you know, it's not you. There's always obviously an imprint of ourselves on every character we play, and by necessity, of course, there's going to be we're going to bring ourselves to things. But, but I think sort of I don't know if this helps or not, but the idea of Thinking more, okay, what does the character do? And then not caring what it sounds like in, in terms of yourself. Because, you know, the, the reality is whatever the character does is the right thing. That's what they do. That's what they do. Um, I remember, so uh, I, you probably all know who Robert Patrick is. He was the T-1000 in Terminator 2. Uh, Robert's a buddy of mine. And... Uh, We've talked about this sort of thing before. Robert's a great actor. He's a really serious actor, and he also just loves 